Hey everybody, it's C9826 and today I'm going to be quickly doing this intro before the cutscenes start so uh, I think I'm going to shut up for the cutscenes because I was watching the last video back and I just felt that uh, the video does so much better with, you know, it's, the experience is so much better just watching the cutscene by yourself so I'm being quiet. <sighs> well that didn't go as planned. Sully, where's Nate? <laughs> Your friend is dead. And you are next. Bones. So today I'm going to be bringing you a Monstry on Hard uh, video. This is going to be some some general tips I could give to you guys who uh, are trying to play this on Crushing. In the last video somebody did ask uh, or mention about Monstry on Crushing and I thought that fitted in nicely with this video. Uh, this video isn't exactly the best gameplay I've had. I didn't really play as well as, as a team as I could have done. Um, there were some issues where I just, you know, I wasn't really in my... I don't know, I can't, I can't really explain it. I'm not trying to blame the other members of the team, I'm trying to sort of blame myself. I wasn't really being paying attention to what the other team were doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and start just explaining some tips of what I should have done, maybe, and what you guys sh you know, should generally do when you're on Monstery on Crushing. So the enemies are going to be giving you a lot of shit from the start on this. You just want to come, the whole team just want to come back out into the main area where you started off with. It is actually possible to use up all your ammo on the very first guys before you even enter this segment, it happened to be once, and the only way that uh, it could be restarted was because somebody left, and so we had enough ammo or a decent person to be able to take out the guys. I am looking to see if I can find a match on crushing. Um, it, this is just played with random people. Um, uh, to see, to show you guys a bit more of the variety or how much harder it is whilst on this difficulty for those who may be a bit more newer to the game. Uh, it is just a lot different. Um, it's you know, it's a bit weird. You might think it's a bit weird. I'm showing you some hard footage from it, but you know, it's, I felt it was a good example to show you guys uh, based on you know, my experience and you know, what you guys should be doing that I didn't do so well here. It all happens a bit later in the video where uh, I'll be doing a little speed up, a little fast forward of where it just generally didn't go well in the very last segment. I wasn't paying attention to the team as I've said but just generally uh, I was going to be giving some tips but right as I said in this area you just want to, the whole team just want to come back out into this area. Quickly nip into that front first area, grab a grenade if you want just on the fountain thing over there you can see it sort of flashing away on the left uh, you go to the right to get a pistol as I did, uh, left to try and get another one, there's some, you know, secondary long gun somewhere. Right here I was just using that little light thing as a little bit of cover, the enemy a enemy's AI or program seemed to get a little bit confused, and luckily, very luckily, the two guys here came and saved my ass. Uh, booster wise, I'm using regeneration and team safe, and of course kickback is army of free, I've got all the mods for the guns. Um, generally you want to keep have a similar loadout, maybe having protector as a, one person having protector as a kickback and the other having uh, team safe, I think it is, team heal or whatever is the one that revives everybody. Um, right about here, this you, the uh, strategy that you're going to adopt is sort of having one person where I kind of am, just being, you know, right about here, just being able to shoot across at the guys over there and somebody sort of maybe on the left and somebody over on the right because simply you want to give some crossfire over on the enemies if you if you can get them in a the position where the enemies are being hit from multiple directions they start sort of spinning around on the spot tr not really knowing though uh, not really knowing who to shoot at you want to also keep an eye out for the uh, stranglers here uh, just keep an eye out for your teams make, that's probably the biggest priority I'd say here after these guys are shooting uh, at these guys or whatever Keep an eye out for the stranglers, keep listening, it's the biggest sense that um, you can really use with this after vision and sound, it's the sound I guess. Um, you just want to keep on coming over, getting the grenades and just trying to take out these guys as quickly as possible. Keep an eye on your teammates, it's always the best way you're going to succeed is by playing as part of the team. And you know, these, these guys here, they're fairly low level but um, you know, we do get the job done. Um, there's also a Wes 44 in this map, I should mention, just over here where that gun is on the floor, it's a Power 9 there. So somebody had already got it, or, uh, I can't really say that word, can I? Somebody had already got it, so right about here, we're just waiting for this guy to come along into the uh, thing. Right after that, you can feel free to stock up on ammo. Uh, any treasures that have been dropped, because you can of course get uh, Donut Drake on hard or crushing difficulties by farming those characters there. I have... Um, I did, I did play a match after this, and I actually did get glitched out on this bit right here. 
where uh, I was as Chloe and I entered the high five animation right there and I became stuck in ve this very part of the map whilst those two people went into the map, the next part of the map. But uh, as I was saying, um, on the very next match I played of this, of Cold Pro Adventure, was on Monastery again, same difficulty. Uh, I think that the person who was playing as Chloe here um, was the only person who carried on, so we had like a new uh, higher level person, and I just did so much better in that match. Probably because I was more used to the, gotten used to playing the game again. Um, but right here, you just want to take your time. It's the biggest thing I can recommend here. You want to take your time, just pick up some ammo, adjust the settings for your sensitivity if you really explore it that much. Just find a comfortable level which suits you, and so you can just take your time. Uh, you can see these guys were just sort of being a little bit too quick. You always just want to take your time to be able to be sure to get those headshots to conserve your ammo for the later stages and just to initiate the second series of uh, segment of waves or whatever you want to call these guys. Just simply jump onto that banner as I did and jump back or at the other side jump on jump back if that's possible on that side and then that will initiate the next segment of enemies and it will be just generally just easier to stay at this end of the uh, corridor place since you've got the, the ground behind you to provide cover if you're say getting hit. If you're on those areas on the left hand side you can easily be hit by some people on the right hand side uh, on the floor or similarly if you're on the right hand side and down on the left the guys can get you. But staying at this general area is just going to be a lot better because you've got um, the cover, the extra ground cover. Here I'm just trying out the settings since it didn't really feel right when I was moving the thumbstick. It was sort of a bit jolty so here I was just trying it out, uh, I didn't really like it at that moment, so I just rang it back down and it just felt a bit more smoother like that. I've been playing a lot of Far Cry 3 recently and I was really impressed with the, uh, I'm not really used to far, uh, first person shooters, but I was really impressed with the um, smoothness of the sniping since all I had to really compare it to was this game, Far uh, Cry 3, because that was what I'd been mainly playing most of last year. But um, yeah, it's, after that segment or wave of enemies, you just want to come over to those uh, little uh, keys there, there's grenades on that chandelier on the right hand side of the map if you want to stock up and uh, yeah, just hang out on these keys until uh, the thing is done basically <clears throat> just, uh, I've been talking a little, got a bit of a dry mouth now but on this bit you just want to let, just go careful because it's so easy just to knock an enemy and let fall, make them uh, enemy, a uh, friend, a buddy to knock, knock them and make them fall to their death so what you want to do is take it slowly, nice and slow, take the people you know, just let them go into stages or whoever is there and you know, take it nice and slow because uh, it's so easy. I cannot explain to you how many times that I've accidentally knocked people or people have accidentally knocked me off and we've died and had to waste a life doing that. So that's probably the biggest recommendation I can make on that aspect. This bit right here, I know it's sort of a cutscene, I probably should have shut up, but uh, this bit right here is probably one of either the hardest part or the second hardest part, depending on the difficulty you're playing on. But Drake can actually glitch out on this part of the map for a match. Also on over here by the right hand side bell there's a dragon sniper and on the left hand side there's a tau sniper. But at this stage the right shield enemies are going to come in so I always take the right hand side route and come over here get, and there's a grenade I can throw and then pick up right again. Right again? <laughs> right away um, so I can take out the other guy and then flank this guy if he hasn't been taken out by enemies already. Uh, there are also M32 hammer guys who start to come round the back as well as um, more riot shield enemies by the bear, bell on the right hand side there. Uh, so you just want to come over, maybe chuck a grenade in, just bounce it off the bell summit to initiate the countdown. I suggest you leave the M32 hammer um, just because there's an enemy, the Pac-80 brute, who comes later in the ma in the uh, map, who he's going to give you a lot of shit. So after that, you can just generally concentrate on the guys on up on here on the uh, balconies. Very simple to take out them. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, also, the stranglers who come down, they they will give you some shit. They're all, you know, the enemies are going to be a lot harder on crushing. So you know. I've, it's a bit weird me showing um, you know, the hard gameplay, but here I was, I was a bit stupid because you can actually blind fire and uh, I was actually wondering who was shooting me down and I realised it was Drake right here. He looks like he shat himself, I don't know if anybody noticed that. But um, you can actually blind fire and then melee an enemy and it sort of ends from the strangling animation but then you sort of glitch out of it or something. It was um, it's like steel fisting, 
and I mean that in the uh, the game way, not the uh, you know the wink wink way, guys. <laughs> but um, yeah, see the guy was just wasting the ammo for the M32 hammer there, and you know having Team Safe on here would have you know protected me from that blast, and it's so easy just to you know to shoot an enemy in the hat like that guy there, knock it off, and then. <clears throat> Going for the melee, and then he will drop a revenge grenade, obviously, which will drop a you know will have a big chance of downing you, and then you know possibly multiple players right there. That guy is obviously just being downed, and then the grenade obviously took him out. And this bit is probably going to bring you the biggest shit. The M32 hammers that you'd have potentially at this stage will be coming so much uh so much be so much helpful here. All you want to do is just uh, hanker down at the other end of the map, so more down towards that end right down by the entrance to this area. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you have team safe, I guess you could use it. I'm not. I'm not really too sure on whether you use it or not, cause, simply because if you can spread yourself out along the bottom way, so like two guys on the right, two guys, uh, one guy on the left. If you can do the crossfire kind of thing I was on about, if somebody has a sniper. Um, or something, F-02 hammer, they'll be able to take these guys out fairly easily. Uh, I believe it takes seven shots with the Dragon Sniper, potentially, whilst on, uh, whilst having the Army of Free Kickback initiated to take out a Brute, though I'm not precisely sure on that, it's going on the experience from Syria. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's it for this section, we'll just wait until we've ran down to the area. Right here, this guy's not going to be able to take out the uh, the Pac-80 gun. It'll just uh, they somehow have an M9 right now. I just noticed that. But this next segment is going to be the one that you've got to watch out for. Sometimes you can have um, you know you can have 10 lives on this. Potentially, I have done it without losing a life. Not to brag or anything, but right here you just want to leave Drake for those. Uh, he's not going to die or anything. He, you can just leave him. It doesn't matter for him at all. You just want to hanker down into cover. And start to take out these enemies. Uh, this is where the, the some of the mistakes that were made uh, came w was because this person did, didn't really know the uh, mechanics of the map or what he, the best method to do stuff in this map is simply just at this segment just leave Drake, uh, just leave him like that, just so you can have time to take out these enemies and then collect power weapons, which are I can tell you where they're located, whether I look at them or not, because this is post commentary by the way. Um, <laughs> but um, right ahead it was in the center of the map, and right ahead actually where I'm going now is a uh, pack 80 up in this little corner here, and just to the left, um, see those stairs on the right? If you go up those stairs and were to go to the right, there's a dragon sniper. If you were to go to the left and around the corner, there's a T bolt, and sort of down, um, if you drop down from the ledge by the T bolt, there's another dragon sniper on the floor. I think there's an RPG. Uh, somewhere around there as well, and also there's an M32 hammer just over, over there on the left in that little tunnely place, just to the left of where I'm aiming now. Uh, all you want to do when you've collected these uh, items is just drop them in the corner, like where I drop the pack 80, and come here from time to time just to pick them up and then drop them again. So with the pack 80, you just pick it up and then press left or on the D-pad to drop it uh, and equip your pistol. That will refresh the despawn rate of the gun. And so it will stay there for the long, for longer. If you keep doing it, it will stay there for however, however long that you need it for. Basically, here you, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. I wasn't really, you know, doing well. And there's the M32 hammer, as I was saying. There's also a Wes 44 just down to the right of where I'm aiming now. It's um, it's probably best to save. You know, it's probably best to save all these weapons for the later stages, like this stage right now. This is probably going to give you the most shit, simply because. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, simply because these enemies are going to be, I think they're probably gonna, most likely going to be a mixture of these guys, as we're seeing now. As I got a bit panicky here and wasted the M32 hammer there, two of them potentially bullets, which could be come in use for later on, uh, especially on crushing. Um, let's see, I've lost my trail of thought now. Yeah, sometimes uh, it becomes a little buggy. These RPG guys are going to be armored, so you want to have simply the sw sweeping the camera around the arena. Uh, just keeping an eye out for them and always take out these snipers because they're going to be a uh, fucking nightmare to do. They really will make your time a bit of trouble, especially if somebody's sort of aiming with a sniper. They might not necessarily notice. And you always get this kind of thing where somebody, like right as you saw there, will fire and waste a shot on somebody who's already got it. So you don't know, I don't know if you'd want to 
dedicate a sniper. Um, one guy who'd be dedicated to having the um, Pack 80 ready for this stage when the Pack 80 group comes along. That'd probably be the best time to maybe, I don't know whether I'd say you should activate your Army of Three here. You can always try, um, to, simply because these RPG guys sometimes can get lucky and fire one RPG shot. And it will hit the thing once. Sometimes the um, as you can see there, I was shooting that guy. I hit him once that he didn't die. I don't really understand what was happening, but you just want you know people just circling this area, maybe just sort of uh, in opposite ends, just like uh, it's like a wheel. If you imagine one person on one end, one person on the opposite end of a well, you can't really have the end of a wheel, can you? But um, radiuses, I guess you could say, and this keep running around, keep looking out, and the stranglers are always going to be a problem, so it's probably best to have maybe a, an M9 or whip out your pistol or a uh, Gmail just to shoot off their helmets if somebody's being grabbed, because, you know, it's going to be a very chaotic scene, um, you know, it's a scene of events right here. Luckily that the guy didn't drop a revenge grenade, but you always just want to take out these RPGs as quickly as possible and keep the Pack 80 guy, uh, whoever is holding the Pack 80 guy, uh, down on your team with the Pack 80 in the corner where I am now. Um, <clears throat> suppressing fire is always going to help just to try try and take out these enemies. It sort of may, might confuse their uh, AI just a little bit, but the positions generally are just of two will appear behind me where I am now, three will appear, one where that guy is there, one at the very top of the library place, and one on the left, and one up on a further away bit near, it's just to the left of the Dragon Sniper. Well, above the Dragon Sniper, that's to the left of the T-Bolt. Always, you know, throw away grenades if you see them. Gen generally, just keep it down to just being... You have to be so active, and... You know, it does take a lot of effort. It does take um, a lot of precise and very good concentration and teamwork to be able to do this. Uh, especially for those who are maybe looking to get trophies and trying not to get uh, a damage on the uh, idol thingy, whatever it is, the statue. I think there's an RPG just behind that thing I climb up now. Just I can't really see it from here, but as I said, uh, a nice little tactic you can do to collect power weapons is to keep mashing triangle, and as, as I'm doing now, it will move weapons forward for you. It can be a little difficult to bring them upstairs and bring drop them off ledges, and if there are other items in the way, such as this M9 as you're seeing now, it can be you know easy to pick up that as I did there. I just want to generally collect those power weapons back in the center if you've missed any. Generally, the ones that are further away, like the ones I got, you probably just want to leave, maybe, for the uh, last bit. Uh, it's always good to have, you know, something. That, sometimes people do have cluster bombs, actually, thinking about it. And, you know, right here, this this bit is going to be the, the very final bit that will prove troublesome. Since you're going to get these free uh, armored weirdos, basically, uh, armored douches. And this is when I activate uh, my army of three. If somebody had a kickback of a cluster bomb, you can throw that and with the double damage that they'll be getting, we'll blow up hopefully all of them. But probably the best method is to take out the enemies that are appearing. This is where uh, I'll probably speed up the footage right about now. Well, a bit soon after we die. But there are, it's going to be riot shield guys that appear just behind me as I respawn in a minute. Right now, there's going to be right shield guys there, so you probably want to take them out first. <coughs> Excuse me. And then concentrate on the snipers. And this is probably where. Uh, this is what I didn't get. I was, be, I was able to be shot by the sniper right here. That did not make sense to me at all since I was below him. This is probably where I'm going to speed up the footage now because I wasn't paying attention to what the uh, buddies, our, our teammates, were doing. They were going up the stairs from where we entered the area. There's a little rock right there which proves troublesome, just uh, to the right of shot there. When you're trying to get up the stairs, it can be just fucking... It's badly designed in that aspect. There's those right shield guys I was on about. There's a really badly designed rock just out of focus there uh, as I get a grenade up my ass. <laughs> I remember in a bit, Chloe um, does get downed up there and I get stuck on that rock trying to jump over it. And it does become really annoying. It's badly designed how a bit of rubble does that to you. Uh, well, that's just my opinion anyway, but... This guy is going to be, you know, bad spawn right here, and hit, and you know the two guys are up there, and that's where I should generally be. You need to, you just want to maybe split up right in the start, but you want to spread out and then converge on an area where you can probably channel down fire. This area is pretty good, and you obviously get killed here. But I'm going to speed up the footage now because 
you will see me deciding on whether to spawn on our last life, because I get killed again. Um, whether I decide to spawn on buddies and or generally respawn somewhere. Uh, so, and I make the good decision to respawn on enemies, that are, uh, buddies that are up in the area. So I'm going to be uh, up in the footage now, and I shall see you guys just in a minute. Right then, I'm back. So this is where I was deciding on whether to spawn on the buddy or not. So and I thought, you know, I have to probably do this to be able to provide support to these guys. Take out the snipers first. Uh, maybe have some people concentrating a little bit of fire on some enemies. If they're, you can generally tell what uh, direction or person the sort of enemies down there are facing towards or looking to kill, basically, since because they'll be looking towards. So this guy over here will be looking at Sully to kill since Sully was shooting. So if you like alternate fire, you can sort of confuse them. If they start to become, you know, start coming up the stairs and they're giving you some trouble, just jump off since you can easily get to uh, over there where the snipers were to be able to rock, be able to provide, um, you know, power weapon cover and stuff as such. <coughs> Pardon me, I just coughed again. Just because I got a bit of a dry throat from uh, talking. Luckily here I just uh, revived the guy here. There's also, uh, I forgot to mention that the RPGs themselves might drop weapons, the bit of a retarded throw for the uh, grenade right there, the cluster bomb guy. And there also are going to be dropped weapons from RPGs, which I forgot to mention, um, which might come in handy. I can't really see them doing the, being the most effective weapons to use, but right here I didn't really see, no, have, or have any idea how the two other guys got taken out, but then we just have this guy to take out, which is very simple. Um, you know, just revive this guy. But all you want to do in that segment is concentrate on the weaker enemies first and leave the guys that are the stronger ones with the power weapons and the special abilities for last. And as we enter this cutscene right here with a lovely, a weird color scheme of helicopter with the name CC on it, which obviously stands for Charlie Tyler. You just want to take out those enemies, go around the outskirts of the map basically, maybe, um, the library entrance with the stairs is probably going to be a bit more better since you can sort of spread out, enter into cover and stuff. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I can't really provide much more, or I will try to definitely provide some crushing content if I can, is to show you how hard it is for those who might not really be sure. Uh, that's the end of the video right there, so I shall see you guys in the next time. I hope this is somewhat helpful, and goodbye.